Hi everybody. Welcome to this third part, you know, of the exercises that we began, you know, before. And now we are going to find the solution to the problem that we have tried to deal with from the very beginning. You should remember that we have tried to identify the realizations of uh, P as a phoneme in English. And we have even determined the phonetic environments for each realization. And we were asked to do, to do so for these sounds here, for K and T. And we were given words from English, okay, our data here, through which we can show the phonetic environment for the realizations of these two phonemes, K and T. So we said that K can be unaspirated, can be aspirated, or can be unreleased. The same thing for T here, except that T has got another more realization which, is, which takes this symbol, which is the flap. So I in words like butter, I I some native speakers would prefer to pronounce this as butter. A attic, attic. Water, water. So this, in this particular phonetic environment, T tends to be pronounced as D. This is one of its realizations or allophones. Okay, so here uh, we are going to talk, you know, uh, I mean, about this uh, problem. One for A. In the following chart, indicate the distribution of the allophones of uh, T and of K. Uh, you are going to notice that, in fact, those realizations or allophones that we have de determined for P also work for k and t. For example, the aspirated k and t correspond to the same phonetic environment of the aspirated p. It is in here, in this position here. When the three sounds p, t, k are in the initial position, they get aspirated so we have to put the check in here same thing uh, the uh, the realization or the realizations of k and t which are unreleased okay here are obtained where here when they are final so this is the same thing as we said about p same thing uh, w we have already pointed out this fact when P is found after S, this P is, un, is unaspirated. Same thing happens to T and K. So we're going to find that after S, the three sounds T, K, P, T and K are unaspirated. So we have got to put the check in here. Now, as I said, the only difference is with T here, the phoneme T. Because it has got uh, a fourth, I mean, uh, realization or allophone. It is found in this context. It is t between two vowels, but the next vowel here is weak, is unstressed. Here. In this context, t becomes, is realized as the, as a flat. That's the only difference. But all the other realizations of also apply to K and T. Why does this obtain in this way? Because normally, because normally, as I said, let me just I mean make it okay. Here We are asked to summarize the similarities in the distribution of the allophones of P, T, and K. I have just mentioned the fact that these three phonemes or sounds in English have got exactly the same allophones or realizations you know, in the same phonetic environment. Why does this obtain in this way? Because I mean, the three sounds form a natural class. What do you mean by a natural class? It's a group of sounds sharing the same phonetic features. So the three sounds in here 
are voiceless stops. The fact that they belong to the same group of sounds, to the same what you call natural class, allows us to talk about them in connection to the same rules, to the same phonological rules. For example, the rule of aspiration in English. When these three sounds, which share the same phonetic features, are found in the initial position, they automatically get aspirated. So, t and k and p. When they are final, at the end, automatically they, they get unreleased. So, now, they get unaspirated when they are after s. For example, here, this one. So, we are going to notice that uh, the same realizations of t and k are also found with p because these three sounds share the same phonetic features. That's why we are, I mean, uh, entitled to group them under the same, what you call, natural class. In a way, we are going to take up this notion of natural classes later on to make it clearer. Now, problem one five. We are going to talk about another phoneme in English here. This is uh, the phoneme L. It has three different allophones or realizations. This L can be clear, L, where the front of the tongue touches the other ridge. It can be O, it, it is dark L, where the back of the tongue is retracted and raised. It can be syllabic, L, where L functions as the syllable peak. Uh, here by syllabic it means uh, uh, it can be served as the most important part of the syllable. Now here are some examples of each type. Look at these uh, examples. We can talk about the L which is clear in words like lip, love, allow, malign, uh, slip, slide. We can have this one dark here. We can have this one syllabic here. Now, the same thing that we did for the other phonemes, but and k, we are going to do it in here. In which context this L, which is dark, is going to be obtained? Is it when it is initial? Is it here when it is between consonant and vowel? Or here, you know, vowel, and uh, it is final, there is nothing after it. Or we have got a consonant before it, and there is nothing after it's final. And, or here, it's before a consonant. Or here, between two vowels, and the next vowel is stressed. Or between two vowels, and the next vowel is uh, unstressed. Now, just, I mean, to help you do it very quickly, let me just point out these facts here. And discuss, you know, examples. Now, for example, in the word syllable, syllable, I need you, to, I mean, just to take into account this L in here, syllable. How do we pronounce this L in here? Is it L or O? Do we, do we say syllable or syllable? The L here tends to be dark and it is at the same time syllabic. Because it's the most important bit of the syllable here, syllable. Same thing here, pedal. In this word pedal, we have got two syllables. We have got ped and do. So, in the second syllable, where is the most important part of it? It's o here. Because of the absence of the vowel, the L assumes the responsibility of the peak of the syllable here, pedal. So, the L here is syllabic. So, in this context, where L is final, notice that we have got an E here, but this E is not taken into account, it's not pronounced. In phonetics and phonology, we take into account only what we pronounce. Okay, so the L here is final, and it is syllabic here. So it is syllabic, but in what context? When it is final. Look here. After a consonant, 
b o d o k o obstacle so here when it is after a consonant and it is final it is syllabic now let me just i mean very quickly talk about this this word here lip and love do we say lip or love no we say lip and love we pronounce it as clear because it is initial so when l is initial okay normally it's uh, uh, clear so what is the context in here among these it is this one here it's initial so it's going to be clear we have to put the check in here now let me just i mean discuss some more examples here now look swallow do we say swallow or swallow do we have do we say silly or silly just to to help you understand what we have got in here try to compare this to the, to the l in here here do we say to allow or to allow what do you notice here in both words here and here we have got the l between two vowels but there is a difference here we have got two syllables in this word swallow but which syllable do we stress in here here we, we stress the first the second one is uh, unstressed but here we say to allow it's the second one which is stressed so in the case where l is put between two vowels and the second one is stressed uh, the l tends to be dark in the case where it is put between two vowels and the, the other one, the next one is not stressed, it tends to be clear, swallow, allow, malign, malign. We don't say malign, no, we say malign. So when the next vowel is stressed, the L becomes dark. Here, I mean, the next vowel is unstressed, the L clear okay so look here we have got the two contexts when we have got L between two vowels and this one is stressed here it becomes dark this is the realization dark here so we have to put the check in here now when the L is between two vowels and the second one is unstressed here the L is clear this is it here we have to put the check in here so uh, in a way uh, you can finish your exercise here uh, by determining which realization in uh, uh, you are going to i mean to give the, the phoneme l in which phonetic environment here okay so this is something that you are going to work on alone now that I have tried to help you to, to understand how you can, uh, I mean, uh, proceed. Now let's try to work with problem 15b. Explain similarities and the differences between the distributions of the allophones of l and of the allophones of p, t, and k. Let me just repeat. Explain the similarities and the differences between the distributions of the allophones of l and of the allophones of p, t, and k. How is the location within the syllable relevant? What about the stressed or unstressed nature of the following uh, vowel? This is what I have just mentioned. Now, we said that when L is between two vowels and the next one is stressed, this L tends to be dark. This is the uh, case of allow, malign. But when this L is between two vowels and the second vowel is unstressed, this L is clear. Here, this one is clear in this context here. So, uh, I mean, the position of, the, of L within the syllable determines its realization. And if you still remember, we talked we talked about the realizations of b, p, t, and k. Okay, uh, you know you can just go back to the exercise that we answered, and you are going to find that 
the place or the position that these sounds occupy within the syllable determines their realizations. Let me just, I mean, talk about the T when it is uh, uh, realized as a flap, when it is pronounced as D. Uh, we said that when it is uh, pronounced as, as a flap, it is between two vowels. But the second vowel is not stressed. In this case, it is pronounced as D. So we can, if you like, try to find some similarities between the pronunciations of uh, uh, these phonemes P, T and K and L. Look for instance here. We have got identical environments. We have got K between two vowels. The second one is stressed. This K can be also between two vowels and uh, the second vowel is unstressed. Now, what realization do we give to K in this context? What realization do we give to K in this context here? So these are the things that we have already, I mean, uh, tried to answer before here. Now, same thing, you know, th that you know, we did for L here. So the position that the L occupies within the syllable determines its realization. So now we have got to stop in here. Next time we're going to finish the other exercises you have got on page uh, four, five, six, and I will add you another page number seven. Okay, see you another time.